Welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'd like to thank Exit 404 for sponsoring this episode. Exit 404 do a wide range of, of innovative accessories, both for filmmakers, photographers, and for general divers. And um, you can check it out at www.exitxit404.com. And um, so I thought um, what I'd discuss is the idea of white balance and how white balance affects our images underwater. And I'm, I'm talking here primarily about still images, although I suppose it does have application somewhat within, within video as well. And my reason for doing so is that one of the ideas that's expounded frequently in the forums and elsewhere is that we can effectively white balance in post and achieve the same results as if we'd white balance at correctly at the top point of capture. Um, and um, this is, well, fundamentally, I think it's incorrect. So, so, but anyway, let's go back around. So let's start off with what is white balance? Well, when um, a camera captures light, be that anywhere if it captures, obviously it captures a spectrum of light. The white light, as we see, is made up of a spectrum of, of lights. Now, I, I would suggest that when you go underwater and you haven't got artificial light, you'll be aware that the majority of the scene is pretty blue in blue water or green in green water. So, so effectively what that means is that the spectrum spectrum of light that was actually available underwater is reduced. And again, I'm sure you're aware of this, you know, we're using losing red at relatively shallow depths. Um, and certainly I, uh, my, my friend Daniel Keller from Keldon Lights did some testing and basically much below 17, 18 meters. Obviously it varies on water quality. There's no red whatsoever left. And certainly the majority of it is lost in the top 10 meters. So, so, you know, we're losing red very, very rapidly. And again, just to emphasize, you probably instinctively know this because when you go underwater and you look at a scene, it probably looks blue or green and you don't really see reds. Your eye, your mind is pretty good at adjusting because it sees red where it thinks there should be red, but there actually isn't any red there. The spectrum of light is blue or green, depending on, on the color of the water. So, Let's assume that we shoot using auto white balance on our camera um, and, um, you know, we we don't, in this case, introduce artificial light. Then the camera will attempt to find a place that it considers neutral gray. And unfortunately, the area that it considers neutral boy, gray will be actually pretty blue or pretty green. So it obviously will struggle to achieve white balance. And we can force it by manually white balancing cameras underwater. And um, so obviously we can manually white balance on a, on, a, on a slate or on something else that we know is neutral color. And that will force the camera to, to therefore look at what it what is effectively a kind of bluish object and say, actually, no, that's a gray object. And, and so it will force it to do it. And that certainly is one technique. However, Obviously, that technique is going to be limited um, when we bump to situations where there isn't much red light left. And obviously, the example here is depth. As we get deeper, the red light gets absorbed um, until eventually there isn't any red light. And at that point, white balancing is going to be challenging in terms of technique. You can still do it. Um, it doesn't mean it won't work, but it will be of reduced effectiveness. So another technique we can use is to employ filters and filters are a useful tool and um, filters are subtractive. They don't add color. They actually filter out other colors. So for example, within blue water, the, the, the color of the filter normally uses an orange filter. And the idea is that that filters some of the blue out. So we're actually reducing the amount of blue that's coming into the camera. And that helps to restore some form of um, spectrum in your images. Um, obviously, again, um, in green water, use magenta filters, same sort of idea. The magenta filter, again, filters some of the green out. So what we're actually doing is we're, we're by using a filter, is we're reducing the amount of colored light that's reduced, and that helps to restore somewhat the um, color balance, this, the, the balance of colors in the spectrum. So both those techniques, obviously, we can use them to basically try and render colors more faithfully underwater. But the most common technique that most of us use is to introduce artificial light in the form of flash, strobe, um, video light, whatever it may be. Um, and obviously by introducing now a white light into the scene, we now are providing a full spectrum of light onto the subject. 
So, you know, if we're shooting a coral reef and we get close enough with our flashes or our strobes or our lights, that light is now lit up with white light. So that piece of our image, that component of our image is now lit with white light. And that will obviously allow colors like reds and oranges and all the bright colors to come out. Um, and obviously that is great because that allows us to then um, get these colorful, vibrant images, which most of the time is what we're seeking. However, what is definitely the case is the ambient light. So the light that isn't being, or the portion of the image that isn't being lit by the artificial light um, will still be whatever it is. So it will be bluish, whatever color, greenish, depending on what, color, what the color of the water is. Um, so, so that bit that you light up will definitely, won't be affected by the white balance. And this is why getting white balance in your camera is really important. Because essentially in that part of the image, there is very little red and the red has gone. Now, one of the criteria, obviously, that used to be or still is considered essential for underwater cameras is the ability to shoot in RAW. And people will often say, well, RAW captures all the information in the scene that you're shooting. And of course, that's absolutely correct. It does capture all the information that, that is in the scene. But when you've got a background in your image or you've got a subject that doesn't have any red in it because your strobes aren't powerful enough, they're too far away, excuse me, then essentially it can't capture red that isn't there. There is no red. So your your um, your camera, therefore, you know, will capture an image which doesn't have that element of the spectrum in it because it's not in there. So you're absolutely right. RAW will capture all the information seen, but when there isn't any information in the red channel, it can't capture that information. It simply doesn't exist. <laughs> So then what happens is we then obviously import our image into your editing software of choice, Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever it may be. Um, and for, for a lot of people, the first thing they do is they reach for some kind of dropper, which allows you to sample an area. And basically you're now saying in post-production, I want this area to be the neutral point in the image. And what happens is the software then moves the color spectrum around to make that part of the image neutral. Now, what typically happens at this point is in order to, we've got a blue image in blue water. So what the, what the color spectrum is, it shifts the whole color spectrum towards the red end. What happens then is that you lose the benefit of those rich blues at the blue end because it's now moved the spectrum. So quite often an example of this is that the blues end up looking very washed out. Sometimes even they go almost white. And whilst you may or may not like that creatively, that's a creative decision that you have to make, what you're not getting is you're not getting those beautiful rich blues. And certainly if you find that your blues are looking a bit washed out, you've got the blues, then probably what that's telling you is that you're not getting enough light on the subject. And be that because your strobes are too far away, be that because your strobes aren't powerful enough, be that because your strobes are, are poorly positioned, and all the other things that can do which allow you to get sufficient light on the subject. But so to say that it's not true, you can't simply fire the, the image and say, well, okay, what I'll do is I'll wait till I get open it up in my software of choice, and then I'll be able to balance the colors out. Truthfully, you can't because it's a global correction. And what will always happen is that you will lose color fidelity from some point in the spectrum in order to, to compromise for it. So um, one of the other things we can do, and this is something that I think has fallen out of vogue a bit, um, but in general, um, you know, when we're shooting um, our strobes, are in known color temperature. So when we're shooting with a an inon strobe and um, without any diffusers on it, it has a color temperature of 5,500 degrees Kelvin. Um, if you're shooting with a retro strobe, it has 4,900 degrees Kelvin, I think. Um, if you're shooting with a C-cam strobe, it's 4,600 degrees Kelvin. And um, with an iColite, I think it's 4,400 degrees Kelvin. Anyway, all of these are numbers that you can go and look up and possibly correct me on because I might have something wrong. Um, and you can look up what your strobe um, 
what what color what color temperature your strobe is outputting. In general, warmer color temperatures, so in other words, smaller numbers, so the four thousands as opposed to the five thousands, will produce a more pleasing blue effect because they shift the spectrum towards the warmer color end, i.e., the red end. Um, so in general, you will find that that they will produce. Uh, it's easier to maintain a really pleasant blue effect with warmer temperature strobes. And again, you know, if you've got cooler strobes, you can cool them. You can warm them up by adding um, warming filters, um, which are often are commercially available, or increasingly now. Um, your, or, or you can also make your own using gels. Um, certainly the Lee gels um, used to be used quite a lot. And we'd, we'd cut out a piece and put it behind the standard diffuser. And that again allowed you to warm your lights up. Now, again, a lot of people now will shoot with their cameras in an auto white balance setting. But again, if you're struggling with this, I think a good thing to do is then to set your camera's white balance setting to the same as you consider your strobe output. So if your strobe output is now with what whatever modifier diffuser gel you've included is now putting out uh, 4,600 degrees Kelvin, set your color temperature to 4,600 degrees Kelvin. And that will then make sure the camera knows that the light that it's seeing in front of it is 4,600 degrees Kelvin and will therefore make sure that it balances the light across the spectrum more efficiently and more effectively. Um, auto white balance, I have to say, does a really, really good job and generally picks up. At, it's not normally a problem, but it, I would say as a troubleshooting measure, if you're finding that you're you're getting funny color casts or you're finding that your blue, you're struggling with the blues and um, to get your blues to be rich, then I would suggest probably a good way of trying to address that would be to um, to actually set your camera's color temperature in its menu. Um, and actually set it to whatever your strobe's output is, obviously given with the modifiers that you've applied to your strobe um, in order to, to get the color, color temperature as you want it to be. So again, you know, the white balance tool, the white balance dropper in, in, in software is our friend. It's a really efficient tool. It does a really great job. But generally, the closer you can get your white balance, the closer you can get the spectrum of light in the camera to what it actually to what you want it to be, the more effective it will be and the better, better it will normally look in the post-processing. Remember, although raw captures everything, it can't capture stuff that isn't there. So if there's no red, it isn't going to see it. All right. Um, just a fairly brief episode. I hope it's been useful. Um, I hope it will help you to capture wonderful blues um, and to capture great colors in your images. Um, I'd like to thank Exit404 again for this episode. We really appreciate their support. We can't make these without their support. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please feel free to add comments or suggestions in the comments box and drop a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.